Welcome back everybody, I'm George, and in this video I'm going to show you the first things you need to do on your new Google Pixel 10 or 10 Pro. I have customization settings, I have improvements for your user experience, and of course I have lots of interesting features that are disabled by default, and that will make your new phone feel and be 10 times better. Now that being said, and without further ado, let's begin with the first thing you always need to do once you set up your new Google Pixel phone, which is to come to the settings, then swipe all the way down to about phone, which is right here, and then tap on device name, because as you can see, you can actually change the device name to anything you want. You can name it potato, but please, my friends, be careful because this is the name that everybody is going to see when you share stuff through messages or through uh, quick share on Android. So yeah, you can name it anything you want, but be careful, everybody is going to see that name. Now, that being said, the next thing you need to do on your Pixel 10 is, well, not something you need to do, but more something you need to know. I am very excited that these phones now have wireless magnetic charging on the back, much like with the iPhone and MagSafe. So if you have any magnetic wireless charger, whether it is from Apple or any other company, you can snap it on the back of the phone and charge it this way, which may not seem so useful with a charger like this, but it is very useful with a charger like this one because you can snap it like this vertically, horizontally, and well, it is a much nicer way to have your phone charging than with a simple cable. But anyways, that being said, let's get back to the things you actually need to do on the phone. Let's tap on settings, let's swipe down to battery, which is right here, and let's first of all tap on battery saver, which, like the name suggests, is the space or the page where you can tweak a couple things here and there to get a little bit more battery life. Now, if you turn on battery saver, automatically it is going to turn the battery icon into a yellow orange color, whether it is on the standard battery saver, which is essentially going to limit visual effects and background activity, very light, just getting you a little bit more battery life, but you can also switch it to the extreme battery saver which is essentially going to block every app that's not essential. So if you tap on the settings right here, it is going to let you choose which apps are essential, meaning the apps that are going to keep working, and non-essential, which are all the apps that are going to stop working to get as much battery life as possible. But anyways, that said, and back here on the main battery menu, we can also tap on battery health, not only to check if our battery capacity is at 100%, which should be the case if it's a new phone, but also to configure our charging optimization. As you can see, it's turned on by default, meaning the phone is always going to optimize your charging, but you can choose between adaptive, or you can go hard on the battery optimization and limit the charge to 80%, meaning the phone will only get up to 80%. This is of course a little bit more extreme, but it will give you a lot more battery health. The battery will last for longer. Oh, and also of course, uh, I think this is not turned on by default. You should probably turn on the battery percentage so you can see how much battery you have left. I'm not really sure why this is turned off by default, but yeah, it is pretty useful information, I think. But anyways, that being said, there is actually another way to save battery life on your phone. If you tap right here on notifications and then you tap on app notifications, you'll see the whole list with every single app that is sending notifications to your phone. The number one battery drainer on phones are apps actively looking for notifications or data all the time in the background. So the more apps you have turned on, the more battery you are going to burn. So what I suggest is that you identify the essential apps you want to be sending notifications, like your messaging apps or your delivery services or stuff like that, and then turn everything else off because the least amount of apps you have turned on right here, the more battery life you are going to get. But anyways, that being said and moving on, now I'm actually going to show you a really cool trick to make the phone feel faster when you use it. 
For that, you have to scroll all the way down once again to About Phone. Then you have to swipe all the way down to Build Number. And then you wanna tap eight times on Build Number. There we go. It is going to ask you to enter your password, as you can see. And once you do it, it is going to create a new page called Developer Options. It is going to be right here on the System page, down below, right here, Developer Options. And well, this is essentially going to be a very long list of, well, developer options to tweak the phone in various ways. Now, most of these things are very technical, very nerdy. You're not going to actually notice any improvement or change, but there is actually a couple very interesting things. The one that I'm going to talk about in this video is a setting that controls the speed of the animations on your phone. Well, it's actually three different settings window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. As you can see, they are all set up to 1x, which is the normal speed, but if you tap on them, you can actually change it to 0.5%, which is half. So the animations are going to flow at half the speed, so it is going to feel a lot faster. You can notice immediately how the phone works and runs way faster than it did before uh, when opening different uh, apps and closing them and moving around the phone and even scrolling, it is going to feel way faster than it did before. Now this is something that you have to be careful with because it is going to take up more performance from the phone to work faster essentially. So if you have a new phone like the Pixel 10, this is fine. But if you have an older phone, maybe like a Pixel 8 or Pixel 7, maybe you should not do this because it is going to make the phone lag and feel jittery because it doesn't have enough performance to maintain this speed. But anyways, that being said, and before we move on, I actually have something for you watching this video. Have you ever tried to watch a YouTube video when eating at the kitchen and ended up balancing your phone on a coffee mug? Well, those days are over. This right here is the Taurus Q3 spin case, which I believe to be the evolution of the traditional magnetic case. As you can see, it has a detachable magnetical ring, so you can prop the phone vertically, but it also flips and adjusts so you can enjoy your video without having to go looking for a coffee mug. Oh, and well, of course, it is still a magnetic case, so you can snap it into any magnetic charger and enjoy using your phone as a second screen when you're doing something else. If you want to check it out or buy it, there will be a link down below in the description, of course. Thank you, Taurus, for sponsoring this video. But anyways, that being said, let's get back to the video. There is a lot more Google Pixel 10 to cover. In fact, let's now cover one of the most interesting segments about this phone, which is customization. If we tap and hold on the home screen and then we tap on wallpaper and style, we can actually swipe to the left and customize the lock screen. So first of all, if we swipe down, we can select the clock style in this case, we get this one by default, but we have different uh, color and shape combinations. As you can see, we can also tap on color and change it to anything we want. We can change the size to anything we want. We can make it large or small, as you can see. We can also add shortcuts to the lock screen. As you can see, we can add a home shortcut. We can add wallet, a video camera, camera, essentially quick actions you can perform from the lock screen, both the left one and the right one are customizable. So right now we are customizing the left shortcut, but if we tap right here, we can also change the right one to be anything you want. Then you can also select how you want to see your notifications, selecting between uh, a full list of notifications, a compact list with everything bundled. And well, if you tap on more lock screen settings, you can also customize whether you want your phone to wake up when you get a new notification. So in this case, by default, it is going to wake up, but you can disable it. So if you get a new notification, the phone is not going to bother you or make a noise or turn on. But anyways, that being said and moving on, now I want to show you my favorite feature on the Google Pixel 10 and 10 Pro, which is first of all, not available on any other Android phone. 
and it is really, really interesting. So if you tap on YouTube, or well, Twitch, or TikTok, or any other video app, you can actually start a conversation about the content you're watching with Google Gemini. So in this case, as you can see, I'm watching a Kuzgasart video. If I activate Gemini like this, it is going to give me the option to ask about the video, and then I can essentially ask anything I want about the video. And the AI is going to watch the content, understand the content, and give me a really good answer about what I'm watching. So let's ask, what exactly am I watching right here? And just like that, in a couple seconds, it is going to give me a spoken answer. In this case, you're not hearing it because I disabled it. But as you can see, it is a pretty long uh, answer explaining exactly what I'm watching. And I could ask it to summarize it, explain something specifically that happened in minute three, 42 seconds, anything that I want. It is going to give me a good answer because it is going to have watched the video before. Now, what's actually really cool is that it is not really limited to video apps. So if you click on Google and then you, uh, let's say you watch uh, an article, in this case it is not very complex, but imagine this is a very complex article about physics or math, you can also ask the AI about what you're seeing right here. So ask about screen. It is going to study the entire web page and it is going to essentially tell you anything you want about the article. So imagine there's a very complex explaining of something regarding well, math or something that you don't understand. You can ask it, it can explain it, it can uh, give you other ways to try to figure it out. This is really, really cool. I mean, I believe when this is enabled on laptops, it is going to change the game forever. But anyways, that being said and moving on, another really cool feature, if you swipe up to access your multitasking menu, you can quickly take a screenshot just like this. But if you click right here on select, it is going to essentially outline all the text and turn it into a copyable form. So you can quickly copy something and paste it somewhere else. But anyways, that being said and moving on with more cool features, if you tap right here on the camera icon and then you tap right here at the top right, you can enable the camera coach, which is essentially going to guide you through what it's seeing on the screen so you can take the best shot possible. And as you can see, it works incredibly well. It has now just analyzed my desk and it is asking me if I want to take an inspired photo, a detailed photo of the box or the cases. It knows that they are cases just by seeing this little corner right here, very impressive. But in this case, for the sake of the video, I'm going to tell it that I want a detailed photo of the box. Now, once it knows what I want, it is essentially going to guide me through a step-by-step -step process. First of all, it asks to reframe to remove background and cases. So let's reframe just like this, tap on next. Then it is asking to zoom in on the box, which I have already, well, I've done right now. There we go, next step. Now it is asking to center the box in the frame. So I'm gonna do just that, next. And now it tells me to take the photo. Let's take the photo. Now this of course is not going to turn you into a master photographer, but it is definitely going to improve the quality of your photos most of the time. You tell the phone what you want and it guides you through the process of getting the right shot and framing it the right way so you get the best photo possible. But anyways, that being said and moving on, let's now talk about multitasking on the Google Pixel 10. So like always, if you activate your app drawer and tap on any app like Chrome, you'll see an option called split screen. So you can essentially use two apps at the same time, just like this. And well, you can even adjust the uh, screen real estate you give to each app. So you can uh, prioritize one app over the other. And well, of course, you can swipe on one, you can swipe on the other, you can use both at the same time. Now, something really cool that's been enabled on Android phones with Android 16 is the 90-10 mode. Essentially, you can swipe here all the way, almost, well, in this case, I did it all the way to the bottom. You have to swipe almost all the way to the bottom, activating what's known as the 90-10 mode. 
which essentially lets you use one of the apps in almost full screen and then tap on the other app to use that other app in almost full screen mode. And even though this may not seem as interesting as the 50-50 split, it is actually much better because essentially here you have the option to switch very fast between the two apps, but maintaining a full screen mode where you can actually properly use the app instead of having a little window. But anyways, that being said, let's come back here to the settings because there is a lot of customization we can do on the display menu. So first of all, of course, we can adjust the brightness level, whether it is manually like this or in the adaptive automatic mode, which I've disabled for the video, but it's the one that I recommend. We can also customize the lock screen, which we did before, so we don't have to do it again, and even turn on the always on display, which for those of you who don't know, is essentially a mode that lets a part of the lock screen show when the display is turned off, so you can quickly glance at the time or the weather or quick information without having to turn on the phone. Although everything said, it is going to burn a little bit more battery life. A little bit below, we also have the option to set a screen timeout time from 15 seconds, not recommended, all the way to 30 minutes, which is the one that I recommend and the one that I use. A little bit below, you can choose whether you want a dark theme or not. Essentially, this would be the default mode. Everything is clear. And then you can activate a dark theme, which makes everything darker. And well, you can also save a little bit of battery life because it's turning off the pixels. So technically it burns less uh, battery through the screen being used. You can change the display size and text size. Of course, you can also change your navigation mode between gestures and buttons. As you can see, the buttons are the traditional three dot layout to go back, to go home, and to access the multitasking menu. And then the gestures is the new and modern way to do it. You can swipe from the left to go back, you can swipe from the bottom to go home, and then you can swipe and hold to access the multitasking window. Also here, a very cool feature is the adaptive tone mode or the night light, which both essentially do the same thing. They turn the display into a yellowish tone, deleting the blue light that uh, the phone is emitting normally. So it is more comfortable to use at night. And so it helps you fall asleep because as many of you know, Blue light is a bad thing at night because it tells your brain that it's daytime. So if you delete it, it is going to be nicer to go to bed and to uh, get sleepy, so to say. And well, also, I'm not really sure why they are all the way to the bottom right here. You can set your screen resolution between high and max. By default, you are going to get high resolution at 1080 by 2410, but you can set it to max, which is what I've done at 1280 by 20, what is it, 2856. And of course you can uh, disable or enable your smooth display. If you turn it off, it is going to run at 60 Hertz. And if you turn it on, it is going to run at 120. My advice is that you set both the screen's resolution to max and the smooth display on because these things are not really going to burn that much battery life nowadays. All these things are very optimized. And if you buy a high-end phone, you are going to want the best possible display with the sharper text and the smoother experience. So yeah, turn both of these options on. But anyways, that is everything that I have for the video. Everything you need to get properly started with the Google Pixel 10. I hope you enjoyed the video. If there is any questions regarding anything that I said, please tell me in the comments. And if not, I hope once again you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again very soon. Peace.